And she lift those up in prayer. I was like sick and just for one, some are getting better. Some are not feeling that great. And we're also praying for our weather situation coming up. Uh, the, the tomorrow, I believe. We're talking about our second snow of 2022. And uh, so keep all that in your prayers. And there's a lot of folks that are going to get this stuff. And uh, so just praying we'll get on the road to that. But God bless you for being here tonight. Um, I had some birthdays. Uh, Martha, she had a birthday on the 3rd. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday, Happy Martha. Happy birthday, Martha. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, let's see. Piggy's off. Um, Ella Olds, and she helps us. She's on the 6th. That's, that's tomorrow. Today. Today. Tomorrow. 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 Thank you. I got to count on it. Tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Miss Payne. Daughter, and uh, she prayed in prayer. She's a great lady. She helps with the feedback as well as our staff. And Davis was yesterday, the fourth. And to, to top it off, I lost my Medicare card. Can I find it? <laughs> 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 is that an omen or what is yes. it? You know? Okay. Know. Well, 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 Jimmy J.J. J. Walker is back on there. I yeah. saw him back on there whining again today. The commercials are back on there. <laughs> I believe it. Um, Let's see, our Christopher Chip Cassius is on the 8th. Elvis' birthday today. Mm -hmm. He just had his birthday yeah. that day. Uh, Shannon uh, Journey Tire, her birthday is on the 11th. Mary Ann Jarenas is on the 11th. And we got a whole bunch coming up. Roberts is on the 14th. Where's that, Robert? 15th. Is it 14th? Robert. Okay, yeah, well, that Robert. That's Robert. 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 Robert, excuse me, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, on the 14th, that's a good date. And another good date, the uh, 15th is Roger. Blanchard has a birthday, and Edie Church, my grandson, he has a birthday on the same day, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the 17th is Oliver McDowell and his son Paul McDowell on the same day. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Emma Burks, her birthday is that day, too. So a lot of birthdays in January. Um, Lord is good. Let me go back here. I'm trying to be modern use the phone. But uh, <laughs> um, I didn't want to go up the steps to get a bullet, but isn't that terrible? <laughs> But when you're over a certain age, you just kind of count your steps, you know. The Lord is good. <laughs> uh, prayer meeting is Friday, January 7th, 6 p.m. at the schoolhouse for our ladies' prayer meeting. We live in McDowell. If there's a weather, please check in with us. The parking lot, you know, we're, we'll, we'll let road, you know. We'll let you know. Night also. Yeah. We'll post on Facebook. Get the weather. Yes. And our prayer meeting on Thursday nights here at the chapel at 7. We'll let you know about that, too. Um, sometimes I do get to get, uh, we put on TV 13, a lot of our events, especially our food bank, uh, church, uh, with the <coughs> academy, the seminary, if we have any changes, we put on TV 13, but I think if you see it's closed, more likely it's closed too. Um, men's prayer breakfast, January 8th, Saturday morning, 7.30 at the schoolhouse. If you brought Alan Blanchard, mm -hmm. questions on that? Let us check into that, depends on the weather. Um, the, the, you can get around in, in this. Uh, food bank, January 15th, that's coming up. Work day, uh, it's coming up, January 15th through January 17th. Um, church and schoolhouse, there's a lot going on. Looking forward to that. Do all this while the weather is nice and cool. Because nobody wants to do this in the heat. So, <laughs> but we need some help. It, it's just come for a little while. It's all good. And I'll see uh, Miss Leela and Dawn and she's going to be great. Um, Solid Rockers Choir practice, January 27th. Got to be here before you know it. On Thursday at 6 o'clock, Big Church seats, Candace Phelps. Um, we are celebrating how many years this, this month, David? For our Founders Day? 29 years. 29 years. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. This, this Sunday. This Sunday is our 29th anniversary. 20, 29 years Actually, anniversary. Actually, exactly. It's January the 9th. January 9th, yes. And we always we have to put our homecoming in the fall because you never know if there's snow in January. So that's awesome. I just thank the Lord for that. God is so good. He's so good. I just lost my page here. Look at that. But um, that's my announcements. Uh, like I said, we're doing Wednesdays down here in the chapel. Um, and our youth are upstairs at 630. At 630 is um, right here. Discipleship class here. And then we, midweek here is the worship at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. So those listening in, if you can, come on out. Appreciate you listening in either way. Um, verse of the month. And I'm going to turn it over to we were going to do our tithes and offerings though. Verse of the month is, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And it's 2022. Amazing, isn't it? Amen? 2022. 
So I actually have my flavor coming up if our uh, speakers are coming up for our afternoon pie. You have to hold your hands out. I think the offering plates are upstairs. Yeah, look, we got them. Oh, you got, look, yeah. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's like moving. All right. Yeah. We'll just come forward with your offering When we walk with <laughs> the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. We ask we thank you for being everyone that's safe here tonight, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, Lord, and, and multiply it for the use of your kingdom. And we just thank you so much for your, your grace and your love for all of us. Yes, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, before you sit down, grab a hand book. Turn to number 504. I love these old songs. They had real meaning. Some of the new songs kind of seem like a little, kind of like the song Happy. You know, it's a great song, but not much to it. It's just fluff. You know, <laughs> Candy and I talk about that sometimes. You know, some of these new Christ Christian contemporary songs are just fluff. Yeah. You know, but these, these old songs have basis in the, in the scripture. And uh, uh, so, 504, sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet. And the last verse, to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. All right, without further ado, we'll turn it over to Dr. Cash. Can you not take the pulpit with me? Yeah, I thought I'd get that long sleeve shirt off so y'all wouldn't have a shock value <laughs> looking at me wearing something with long sleeves on it. But uh, anyway, y'all pray for Peter. Uh, he got sick while he was in New York, and he got feeling well enough to come home. And after he got home in a couple of days, he was feeling great. Then his whole family got sick, and then he got sick again, waiting on them. And so he said he's in the bed sick tonight. And so y'all pray for all of the Alexander family that uh, uh, they'll get over this. It's a uh, terrible bug going around and thankfully it doesn't really 
believe he last. He never went to New York. Yeah, that's true. I think that's one of them Yankee bugs. But it, um, it doesn't last too long. And most people have just had some very mild symptoms of it, like kind of like a head cold. And so, and believe it or not, there is still such thing as a head cold. You know, I mean, we can still get a head cold and still get the flu. Now they're advertising. Yeah, that's right. They're, now they're advertising medicine for colds and flu. But the media said, assume that everything is COVID. So, you know, they, they're going to ride it to the ground best they can for a good while. But uh, nonetheless. Thank you all for all being here tonight, and I know there are some that actually still cannot get out of their driveway uh, tonight, and I do hope that the weather map was right, what I saw this evening. It looked like the storm was going to go under us. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. But we're looking tonight in John chapter 15, and Jesus is giving a discourse about being the true vine. There are some things that he is saying that is directed strictly to the disciples and the rest of the things he is saying is directed to all of us because he is talking to them at a time that the Holy Spirit had not yet been given. And then he tells them that the Holy Spirit will be given soon and so we need to determine um, how, who he's addressing in here. Now, it's like Matthew chapter 24. Jesus is strictly addressing a Jewish audience in that time. And a lot of Christians put it on there, or look at it, and they'll preach it and think that it applies to the church today. But Jesus was given a warning to the nation of Israel at that time. And so we have to know who he is directing his comments at. And he, that, that he tells us, he says, I am the true vine. And he really is. Now, Don and I were riding through Lynchburg, running some errands the other day, and an old singing group from the 70s, from over Thomas Road, came on our station, which I had managed to find an old ragged cassette. I spliced it and ran it just long enough to make a CD out of it before it flew into a thousand pieces. And the name of the group was called True Vine. And they were really, really awesome. It was very folksy, very beautiful harmony. And I, and I finally found somebody over at LU that remembers them. And he told me where they all are. And I found them, by the oh, way, today. So they're still around the, the group. And, and, and they used that term, True Vine, because it's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the True Vine. There's no other but him. And he said, and my father is the husbandman. Now, a husbandman was a, another word for a vine dresser. Uh, they, they would refer to people that took care of, of grapevines literally as a husbandman during those days. And he said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And that's still true today. All Christians, all of them, if you are truly saved, you will bear fruit, period. You will. You will bear fruit of some kind, somehow, some way. And if you've never borne fruit, if you've never done anything as a result of being saved, if it never showed, then there's a problem. And he said, every branch in me that beareth fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that he, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, I, I, I never did much with grapevines. I never had a lot of luck with them, but my dad did. And what you do each year, you take and prune the vines way back to where it almost looks ridiculous. It looks like nothing could grow out of it. And then all of a sudden in the spring, everything starts coming out of that, and the vine gets longer and longer and longer and produces a lot of fruit. And that is what the Lord does with each and every one of us. How many of y'all have been purged before by the Lord? Or uh, pruned, let's put it that way. Yeah, and it ain't fun, is it? But you know what? After he has done that, it really produces fruit. 
It really produces fruit. And we can't produce fruit for the Lord unless he has purged us, unless he has trimmed us back sometimes. And he does that for our own good. And he said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, he tells the disciples here, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye. And that's true. If you're not in Christ, you're not producing anything. You can't. You can't possibly produce anything unless you are in Christ. You're part of him. And it said, uh, it said a, a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. And so it's necessary that you must be truly born again and in Christ in order to produce any kind of fruit for the kingdom. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So we're not the vine. We're not the root. We are just the branches. And the Bible even says in I think it's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, that we Gentiles were grafted in uh, because of Abraham. Yep. And we get to benefit of the blessings of Abraham because we were grafted into the vine. God did us a favor. Uh, believe it or not, the gospel was originally brought to the Jews. Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for what? It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. And it was offered to them first. And because, and Isaiah knew it was coming, because the majority of them rejected it, it was also offered to a people who were not a people, and that's us. And so we were grafted in, and because of that, we have the opportunity to enjoy the blessings that was promised to Abraham and his descendants. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now, I remember one of my teachers many years ago used to say, now we can't judge we can be fruit inspectors. And the Bible said what? By your fruits they'll know you. And so a person can look at you and see if you are, what kind of fruit you're producing, and they can know that you know the Lord. And if you're not producing any of the fruits of the Spirit, if none of them are evident in you, and none of them are showing in you, then very, very likely you've never been born again. It does make a change. An old black pastor from Baltimore, uh, Joseph Brown, once said, any gospel that does not change you is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It makes a profound difference in your life. doesn't make you perfect, but it will change your life. And it's a constant thing. The Christian life is not a thing of like, boom, I'm a Christian now. It's all over with. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to do anything. I, I, I'm just going to sit here and wait for the Lord to come get me. Mm -mm. It's a constant working on each and every one of us. And everybody in here has been worked on in a different way. We all have our thing that the Lord has to purge us with and has to deal with us and has to trim us back and has to uh, cultivate us and get us to grow. And he does that with all of us. And if he never bothers with that, you're not one of his. You're not grafted into the vine. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. I remember last summer, I bought myself one of these eight-foot pole electric chainsaws. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, they work. 
you know, I, they will cut limbs about that big around with a little battery. You know, they, the technology is amazing what they've got with that now. And so there were limbs hanging over my driveway that would hit the top of the car just about when you drive down through there. So I went and got me one of those, and all I did was I just walked up the driveway and hit it. And I got it all done in about 15 minutes. Whereas if I'd have took a regular saw, I'd have been out there all day long. And it just moments. And I kicked those branches over into the edge of the woods. Two days later, those branches were withered up, and the leaves were completely completely dry on it, and I, I thought about that verse. If a man abide not in me, because they were cut loose from the rest of the tree, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And look, look at this. Men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That is the end game of those that are not abiding in Christ, that are not part of the body. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. And then he said, continue ye in my love. Now, if you have the Holy Spirit living within you and has sealed you, now that came along later, you will love God. You will have because of the Spirit that lives within you, because you are regenerated. Do you? A lot of people don't know this, but the disciples had not been regenerated yet. They hadn't. Now they loved Jesus and all that, but they had not actually been regenerated because what did um. What, what, did, uh, what did Jesus tell Peter? He says, the devil hath desired you to sift you like wheat, but after you are what? Strengthen your brother. Converted. After you are converted. Now they were, were operating under the Holy Spirit's power as it was given to them for that temporary time, and but they were not yet regenerated. And, you know, a lot of people look at me funny when I say that, but it's true. Because it's not until you get all the way over several more chapters after Jesus died and he rose again. And then it said he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Ghost. They had not received it. He had only come upon them at certain times, like in the Old Testament. They were still under the Old Testament economy right here, getting ready to step into the church age. I know that's not a, a popular to teach this, but it's the truth. It's actually true. Yeah. And so anyway, he's given them instructions on bearing <laughs> fruit as a child of God. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, he said, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and so shall you be my disciples. Now, as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now, if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. But once a person is born again and regenerated by the Holy Spirit, you have fulfilled the commandments of God at that point, spiritually speaking, positionally speaking, as the way the Lord views you. You have fulfilled those commandments. And a lot of people thought that Jesus was even talking about the Ten Commandments, but he wasn't really talking about that either. It's a whole different thing because Jesus even told them right at the very beginning, he said, we'll give you a new commandment, a brand new commandment. And that is the keynote right there to determine whether somebody loves God or not, and you'll see it in just a moment. All right. He said, you, he said even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be fulfilled, or full, be full, rather. The thing that Jesus does for us all the time, where he prunes us, he purges us, 
He works with us. He encourages us. Is not to make us sad. Not to ruin our day. But to make our joy full. That's the whole thing. And he said here. This is my commandment. Here we go. Here's the commandment that we that the disciples have to keep and we keep. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That's how you tell if somebody really knows the Lord. I've heard people joke about that said, "Oh, so and so been in church for 40 years and they're the most hateful thing I've ever met in my life." They hate everybody. They don't like anybody. They're always flying off the handle and they grouch at everybody. You know what? They ain't saved. They are not. If they do not love God's people, they don't love God. They don't. You, you know, Clifton did a, um, and I preached his wife's funeral yesterday. Clifton used to say that an uh, 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 indication that a man has been born again is that he loves God and he loves God's people. And you could tell if they don't love either one, you know, and Jesus pretty much said, you know, if you love me, you're going to love my people too. All right. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he gives this one here. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. <laughs> Jesus set that example by laying down his life for us, even when we were enemies. But he laid down his life for us. And as Christians, we are to give our lives for others' sakes. Uh, that doesn't always mean that you die, but it does mean that that's what your life is dedicated to doing. Christianity is not a part-time thing that we do when we have time. It's a lifelong thing commitment. Total lifelong commitment. Alright, just remember, this is my commandment, that you love one another. Alright, he said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I've heard of my Father I've made known unto you. And he did, he shared that with them. There's a popular song out now that says, I'm a friend of God. And I've heard it sung in a couple of churches in town, and it's even done by a bluegrass group. And that's true. You are actually a friend of God if you are born again. And then he tells us this. So we can't brag, and so we can't be arrogant about what we did to get saved. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And he, we are his choice. He pulls on your heartstrings. He calls you. He chooses you. Now, the, now I'm not going to be a Calvinist by any means yeah. and saying only the chosen get saved. You become chosen after you get saved. Let <laughs> me put it that way. That's the way it goes. Because everybody will have an opportunity to be saved. Why? Because Jesus said this. He said, I, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Everybody is drawn to Christ. Not everybody will accept him. Not everybody will accept him. And we are his chosen. When we have been, we are born again, we know that he has chosen us. And listen to this. This is what God wants you to do. He said, I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. That's what we're to do. It's ordained that we go forth and bring fruit fit for the kingdom. And that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. <laughs> our big question and our big problem is do we ask these things? his name or just because it's something we want. It, it's what we ask God for. Is it really for the sake of the kingdom or is it just something that we want? If it is for the if it is in the name of Jesus and it's the sake of the kingdom, he 
will give it to you. And he said, these things I command you. Here's a commandment again, that you love one another. And so he even said that when he was teaching, that if you do this, if you love God and you love one another, you have literally fulfilled all of the commandments. Because if you do love God and you do love one another, you won't be out there committing adultery, you won't be out there stealing, you won't be out there lying, you won't be out there cheating. You won't be murdering people. Why? Because you love them. Think about that. So it really does fulfill all the commandments. Now, here's something that we're seeing more and more of now. Not only was it that had to deal with this, not only did the early church have to deal with this, but the latter church has to deal with this too. The, the ones in our time, not latter day saints, I'm not going to say that. But the, the church of today, <clears throat> if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. People that hate Christians, and I've heard people say that I hate Christians, they hate God. They hate Christ. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. If you belong to the world, you have no trouble getting along with them. They, they love you. They think you're great. Because you participate in the things that they do. But because you are not of this world, but I have chosen you out of this world, therefore the world hated you. We are finding more and more now that a lot of the stuff that's being mandated in our country today is aimed solely at Christians. But they won't outright say it just yet, but they're getting ready to. A lot of the, the terrible laws being passed in our country are, be, are because they are at enmity with Christ. Look at all of the, the things that came out just since the, uh, I call it the Obama regime. Look at all the terrible laws that have been passed. And now they're trying to do even more and more and more. It's because they hate Christians. Now, he says here, but because you're not, it said, but you're not of the world because I've chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. And, you know, I, I've heard people say, well, I don't see why uh, nobody hates me. You know, they might hate God, but they don't hate me. And I'm a Christian. Well, you ain't doing something right. <laughs> you are not doing something right. Either you're lying or you're hiding or you're doing something. Because if you speak up and tell the truth, you will make a lot of enemies. Oh, believe that. And, and, not, and, and because of the word. That's it. Remember the word that I said to you, the servant's not greater than his Lord. So don't think that you're doing better than the Lord did. You're just lying. Now, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. That's kind of, again, the litmus test of how we know who is who. And you know, it's not covered in here, but the Bible says that our spirit bears witness. Y'all ever walked up to somebody and talked to them and you knew they were saved, right? Because your spirit bear bore witness with them. You could tell, but it, I can always tell by looking at the eyes. So any of y'all ever noticed that? You can see Jesus in somebody's eyes. You ever, you ever done that? There, there's a pastor friend of mine that, uh, matter of fact, they pastor over at uh, the school. And you can look in that boy's eyes and see the Lord. You really can. And, and he's a wonderful, godly young man. And, and, and I know some people can hide it and deceive and whatever, but sometimes it just comes right out. It bubbles out. And they, they... Clint, you can always tell. Yep, he could. And... and and that, that is a gift, you know. He, I've heard him walk up to people and he said, you love God, don't you? Right to a stranger. And they'll go, what? And he'll go, you love God, don't you? I know you do. And then he'd get into this lengthy discussion with them. It's always so funny uh, to see that. But yeah, he would, he would do that. It's good that you said that. All right. And he said, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. I do not understand 
evil to the extent of why people hate Christians so much when it would be a, such a benefit and a blessing for them to be friends with them. You know, and, and it's not like Christians are out to do this to them and out to do that. They're, they are there for their benefit and, their, and to help them. But they don't know the Lord, and so as a, they don't know the Lord, so they hate the Lord's people. And then he makes a statement. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. And, you know, it's like Paul said, I was alive without the law once. In other words, I didn't have a knowledge of the law as a child, and so I was alive. But then it said, then sin came, and the law came, rather, and sin revived, and I died. He died spiritually when he realized what the law said about him. And he needed a savior. That's why a child or a person who does not have understanding is covered. Their name is already in the book of life, and as everybody else's is. And they never understood sin to where they died spiritually. But Jesus said, now that they've seen me, they have no cloak. They have nothing to hide their sin. And he that hateth me hateth my father also. You can't say you hate Christ and love and love God. They're the same, the father and son. So he that hateth me hateth my father also. And then he said, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. And so, you know, Jesus came to them, and he told them, I'm the Messiah. And, and he taught them how to live, and he taught them how to love, and they turned on him and hated him. You know, really, the, the bitter hatred that they had for Christ is amazing. I can understand somebody hating me. I really can. I can. It's not a stretch to figure out why some people hate me. But hate Jesus? He actually never did anything wrong. He never committed sin. All he did was love people, and he healed people, and he restored people, and he taught, and he saved people. You know, when he come, when he was walking here on the earth, he was never ugly to anybody. He was never rude to anybody. He was understanding to everybody, and he told them the way to be saved, and was kind, and they still despised him. That is a really amazing thing, how people could do that. And he said, but this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their laws, they hated me, and here we go, without a cause. They had no cause to hate Christ, and we ought not give anybody cause to hate us. If they want to hate us, let them hate us just simply because they want to, and that we have not given them a cause to hate us. But they hated Christ without a cause. But then he makes this statement right here, and he, he prophesies throughout the book of John about the coming of the Holy Spirit where he is given collectively. Now you got to remember, the Holy Spirit came upon people in the Old Testament at random times. He would come upon David to inspire him to write the book of Psalms and the other authors of the Old Testament. And then he would come upon them at times of battle and at other points. And But but now, in the after Jesus died, the Holy Spirit and rose, the Holy Spirit was given collectively to everyone to where they he indwells us. Prior to John, I think it was 20, where Jesus breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Ghost, he had not indwelt anyone. That's why David wrote in Psalms 51, Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Because God doesn't do that to a Christian now because he lives inside of us, he empowers us, and the Bible said he seals us. And the other thing about the Holy Spirit said he is the earnest of the the earnest of the Spirit, he is a gift, he is a wedding gift that was given to each and every Christian to let
let us know that Jesus is coming for us. Kind of like an engagement ring. When I asked Donna <clears throat> to marry me, and uh, I still hope she doesn't think it was a horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> but when I asked her to marry me, I put a little ring on her finger. I never, I'll never forget it. I, I wanted to wait for her birthday, which was December the 22nd. And this was in 1984. And that thing was burning my pocket. And I couldn't wait. So on the 20th, I just couldn't wait two more days. Couldn't wait two more days. I, I knelt down in front of her and asked her to marry me, and I put that ring on there, and it's still there today. And that wedding ring was a gift to tell her that I would marry her. And that following March the 31st, which is coming up on 37 years, I did. And that ring never came off her hand. And, and that was my promise to her. The Holy Spirit is God's promise to us that he's coming for us. And so that in the different dispensation, the Holy Spirit had a different administration. And here Jesus is talking about him. And I close with this. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And that spirit that lives inside of you, that Holy Spirit that indwells you, gives you the power to witness, gives you the power to teach and preach and tell other people about Jesus. He brings to your remembrance verses that you read when you're witnessing to somebody. Have you ever had the time where you sat down to witness to somebody and all of a sudden verses started rolling? And you, and you said, where did that come from? I, you know, but you'd read them before and you knew about them and that's the Holy Spirit bringing it out when it's necessary. And when you, and, 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 and I notice, I watch a lot of preachers. And uh, I particularly love to watch Nikki. When the Spirit gets a hold of that old boy right there and he gets fired up, he can let it rip. He can, and he tells it like it is, and he, he does it with fire. When, when the Spirit takes over with him, and I watch other others of y'all when you do that, when you teach and and when you lead worship and all, and I, I can I can tell when you let the let yourself out of the way and let the spirit take control because everything really changes. It really does. You know, all of you know that. And he gives you clarity to teach. I can't remember ten minutes ago what somebody said to me, but when I get behind the pulpit, it starts coming back to me. You know, I can tell. And that's Holy Spirit because it surely ain't me. The older I get, the more I keep forgetting. And I watch all of you, each and every one of you that have ministered here before, in whatever capacity. And and he does all, he, he bears witness. He does the testifying. I watch that, and it's really amazing. And he said, you shall also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. And so, here we are, the teaching of the vine and the branches we cannot do anything unless we are abiding in Christ. That is what is so, so important, is our walk with the Lord. That's more important than anything else we have, is our walk with the Lord. Well, um, you got a song for us? And I don't think they're killing each other out there yet, so uh, if they are, Jim, tell them to tidy up. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's stand, and if you have a prayer meeting, come on up, and we'll close in just a moment. I'm singing 367. When you live for Jesus and be always pure and good, would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burdens?